Blessings, everybody. This is Dale. Thank you so much for joining with me today on the Word Podcast. We're continuing our examination of what we saw in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, where it shows us and gives us a pretty uh, precise description that man is spirit, soul, and body. And so we're chasing around some cross-references in relationship to that. We've looked in Genesis 1 at the creation account and saw how uh, man is made in the image of God. And we understand that we share the spirit part with only God. Animals, some animals have the soul part. That is actually the animal part of humans, <laughs> for lack of a better uh, phrase, okay? But we have spirit, we have soul, we have body. So what I thought we'd do today is just very quick. I just want to read through the second chapter of Genesis, which continues with the account and gives other insights into the account of God creating. So here's Genesis 2, beginning with verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed and all their host. By the seventh day, God completed his work, which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work, which God had created and made. So that's really the end of the uh, creation account from the first chapter. So we see that he rests on the seventh day. And that is, just, just for a little sidebar here, that is a picture of what God was going to be doing with mankind. God was setting the example of a rest on the seventh day. Now, verse 4, Genesis 2. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created, in the day that the Lord God made earth and heaven. Now, no shrub of the field was yet in the earth, and no plant of the field had yet sprouted. For the Lord God had not sent rain upon the earth, and there was no man to cultivate the ground, but a mist used to rise from the earth and water the whole surface of the earth. Then the Lord God formed man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. Literally, the idea is that man had a soul, man had a spirit. So this ties into what we've, we're looking at out of Hebrews in Genesis 1, that the Lord formed man out of the dust of the ground. And so you have this entity, you have this body, but then the Lord breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. The Lord God is the one that brought forth the life. Now, verse 8, the Lord God planted a garden toward the east in Eden, and there he placed the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground, the Lord God caused to grow every tree that is pleasing to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Well, we've seen that already, and he's about to talk a little more about that. But see, there were actually two trees in the midst of the garden, the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Verse 10, Now a river flowed out of Eden to water the garden, and from there it divided and became four rivers. In other words, like four heads of the rivers. The name of the first is Pishon. It flows around the whole land of Havala, where there is gold. The gold of that land is good. The bedillium and the onyx stone are there. The name of the second river is Gihon. It flows around the whole land of Cush. The name of the third river is Tigris. It flows east of Assyria. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. Verse 15, then the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to cultivate it and to keep it. The idea of cultivating there is that he tended the garden. He didn't have to work the garden from the perspective that we understand work by the toil of the brow. He cultivated it. He tended it. Verse 16, the Lord God commanded the man saying, from any tree of the garden you may eat freely, but from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat from it, you will surely die. Then the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a helper suitable for him. Verse 19, Out of the ground, the Lord formed every beast of the field and every bird of the sky and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called a living creature, that was his name. The man gave names to all the cattle, to the birds of the sky, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper suitable for him. 
a really sort of poignant type of thing right here. The Lord creates all these animals, and in the first chapter we saw that it was after their kind, after their kind, right? So now he brings the animals to man, Adam, and Adam names them. But there was not a helpmate suitable for him. Well, God knew that, but he wanted Adam to know that. Okay, He wanted Adam to see that there was something special that God was going to do for him. He had to realize what was happening. This really speaks to a lot of things within our society today of how the enemy perverts man and how he perverts creation. So verse 21, so the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh at that place. The Lord God fashioned into a woman the rib which he had taken from the man and brought her to the man. The man, the man said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Uh, the, the she right there, man is ish, the woman is isha, okay, is the Hebrew. So he's saying this one was taken out of me, so Adam knew what had happened. He said, this is it. This is a lot better than Fido over here. This is a lot better than the cat. This is a lot better than the birds. This right here is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. And he realized that this is something important. Now, this is interesting. The last two verses, Genesis 2, 24. For this reason, well, for what reason? Because she, she, uh, the woman is bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. That's interesting, isn't it? We're very familiar with that, uh, that a man shall leave his father and his mother and to be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. It's a great little phrase right there that comes from uh, somebody maybe 100, 150 years ago. I ran across it. I actually heard it from a pastor friend. Then I read it in an old commentary years later, talking about what happens here, that the man leaves, okay? The man leaves his family. He's joined to his wife. He cleaves to his wife. And they shall become one flesh. They are woven together. So there's a leaving, there's a cleaving, there's a weaving. <laughs> okay? It's easy to remember that way. The leaving, cleaving, and weaving. He was showing, the father was showing the pattern for the family. Now, what's interesting, this is written during the time of Moses, okay, as an account of creation. And this, so this is explaining where these things have come from and what's happened, okay? Explaining how, uh, Man created in the image of God. Remember what it said in the first chapter, male and female. Now how male and female will be one flesh together in the marriage covenant. And you notice what they were. They were naked and were not ashamed. Why were they naked and not ashamed? Well, they haven't been rebellious. They hadn't sinned against the Lord. They hadn't gone against the one thing he told them not to do. I think there's more to it than that. I think they were covered in the Shekinah glory of the Lord. And when they did rebel, when they did sin... They realized something's happened here. The Lord had woken, had a broken relationship there. They had broken the relationship with the Lord, and the Lord had taken away his glory from them, and they saw themselves for who they were without the Lord exposed. Anyway, uh, some wonderful, wonderful things here about how we are spirit, soul, and body, even down into the relationship between the husband and wife. Again, I'm Dale. Thank you so much for your time, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.